Good morning. Greetings and welcome on this first Sunday after Christmas, on this great service of joy and celebration for the birth of the Christ child. Whoever you are, wherever you come from, whoever you love, whatever you've done, whatever you've left undone, know that you're all so very warmly welcome here. There is room at the inn for you at Charlotte Congregational Church. Welcome to worship. Words for Contemplation, from the poem Christmas by George Herbert. The shepherds sing, and I shall silent be. My God, no hymn for thee. Please join me in our opening prayer as we say together, there's reason to sing today, such great reason to howl hymns, croon carols, and serenade songs. For Christ has broken into the world with joy and love. The shepherds sing and I shall silent be, my God, no hymn for thee. Our opening hymn for this morning is appropriately, wonderfully, Joy to the World. Please join us, sing loudly as you are moved. Oh, 
Good morning. This is our time for prayer, and I have some to raise. First for Julie Weed, Joan Weed's daughter, who is struggling with her health, and for the family of Bruce Campbell, who died last week, and also for Virginia Kaiser on the death of her beloved husband, Mac, and also for all who spent this past Christmas alone and who look forward to perhaps a New Year's alone too. We hold all of you in our hearts. Let us pray. Dear God, here we are. You've got our attention. Sometimes we lose sight of you behind the stuff of our lives, behind the job, the dwellings, the virus, the preparations, the cleanup, the loneliness, the news. We lose sight of you. And so we react, dismiss, accomplish, languish, or ignore. We're apt to react to those who hurt us a bit too hastily. We turn away rather than towards that which frightens us. We look for your assurance not in the midst of conflict, but away from it, in some quiet, sheltered spot. We take a walk when things get fractious, fire up the laptop, pour a drink, go for a drive, try to think of something else. We seek you in bird song and mountain vista, in nature and quiet, for we know that you are always there. We forget that when we turn away from conflict, when we retreat, we leave you. For you are back in the house, in the echo of the slamming door, soothing the heart branded by searing words on the cross, in the crossroads, waiting for us to return. The truth is, and we needn't tell you this because you know it already, the truth is that we are frightened. We're frightened of the anger that seems rampant, near and far. We cower from conflict. We yearn for peace, but are hesitant to work for it. We shake our heads at the headlines. We assuage our irritation with those we love by turning away from them rather than speaking the truth in our hearts. Holy God. Grant us the courage to speak with honesty and grace, to speak the truth in love. Prod us to work for peace as we pray for it. Give us a hand up off the couch of complacency that we might engage in your work. For we are reminded in this Christmas season that you came to us as tiny hands and feet, that in that parting of the heavens, you assured us that no gesture of peace is too small, no person too little to make a difference. So we reach out a hand to you, lift us, guide us, sustain us with your love. Amen.
I'm a camel. I brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the baby Jesus. It was so fun to help. If you would like to make an offering to our church, you can help too. You can go to the church's website at www.charlotteucc.org slash giving. Thank you. We're all in this together. Literally. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for our ability to give to others. Bless our gifts and may they help with peace, justice, and love in the world. Amen. This morning, we read two passages from the Gospel of Matthew. The first reading from chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, tell us Matthew's story of the birth of Jesus. Let us listen together for God's word. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 
When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. The second reading from chapter 25, verse 35, is a lesson from the now grown Jesus about serving him by serving one another. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. May God bless these readings and our hearing. With the gospel readings from Matthew still ringing in the air, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My message this morning is not a sermon exactly, but the retelling of a story, a famous story called Papa Panov written originally in French, but translated into English by the great Russian author Leo Tolstoy. It was inspired by the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 35. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Hear now this story. It was Christmas Eve, and although it was still afternoon, lights had begun to appear in the shops and houses of all over town, for the short winter day was nearly over. Excited children scurried indoors, and now only muffled sounds of chatter and laughter escaped from the closed shutters. Maria and Manuel, the town bread makers, steps outside of their shop to take one last look around. The sounds of happiness, the bright lights, and the faint but delicious smells of Christmas cooking reminded them of past Christmas times when their own children were little. But now their children had gone. Usually smiling and hopeful, Maria and Manuel, they looked sad now. Maria went back indoors and Manuel followed her, closing the curtains and setting the kettle on to boil before joining Maria by the fire. Maria did not often read, but tonight she pulled down her Bible and began to read the Christmas story out loud to Manuel. She read how her namesake Mary and Joseph, tired by their journey to Bethlehem, found no room for them at the inn so that Mary's little baby was born in the barn. Oh dear, oh dear, exclaimed Manuel. If only they'd come to our house, we would have given them a bed and covered the baby with a quilt to keep him warm. Maria read on about the Magi who came to see the baby Jesus and brought him splendid gifts. Manuel's face fell. We've no proper gift to give him, he said loudly and with more than a hint of sadness. Then his face brightened. Maria, stop the story for a moment, he said. As he got up, stretched his long arms to a high bookshelf, took down a small dusty box and opened it. Inside was a precious gift. Inside was a perfect pair of tiny leather shoes that both his daughters had worn as infants. Manuel smiled with satisfaction. Yes, they were as good as he'd remembered them. We should give him those, Maria, he said, as he gently put them away and sat down again. Maria and Manuel were both feeling tired now, and the further she read, the sleepier they both became. In no time at all, the tired couple was fast asleep in front of the dwindling fire. Now, you may not believe this, but as they slept, they both had the same dream. They dreamed that someone was in their shop room, and they knew at once, as one does in dreams, 
they knew who the person was. It was Jesus. You've been wishing that you could see me, Jesus said kindly in the dream. So look for me tomorrow. It will be Christmas Day and I'll visit you, I promise. But look carefully, for I won't tell you it's me. Maria and Manuel slept soundly and peacefully that night, walking only when the church bells rung and thin light filtered through the shutters. Bless my soul, said Maria. It's Christmas Day. Maria stood up, and Manuel stood up, and each turned to the other to tell of the dream and the promise of Jesus' presence. Neither could believe it, but it was true. They'd shared the same dream. This would be a very special Christmas after all. For surely Jesus was coming to visit them. How would Jesus look? Would he be a tiny little baby as at that first Christmas? Would he be a grown man, a carpenter, or the great king that he is, God's son? They agreed to watch carefully the whole day through so that they would recognize him however he came. Manuel put on a special pot of coffee for his Christmas breakfast, opened the blinds, and looked out of the window. The street was deserted, no one stirring yet. No one except the lone jogger out for her morning run. She looked rather miserable out there, freezing in the raw cold and bitter mist. Maria opened the shop door, letting in a thin stream of cold air. Come in, she shouted across the street. Come in and have some hot coffee to warm up. The runner slowed and began running in place. She was only an acquaintance, a stranger really, but also glad for the invitation to come into the warm room. Her running clothes steamed gently in the heat of the stove as she clasped both red hands around the comforting warm mug. Maria and Manuel watched her with satisfaction. But every now and then their eyes strayed expectantly to the window. It would never do to miss their special visitor. Expecting someone? The runner asked at last. So Maria and Manuel told her about their dream. Well, I hope he comes, the runner said. You've given me a bit of Christmas cheer I never expected to have. I say you deserve to have your dream come true. She smiled and graciously left them to their waiting. Manuel began to arrange a plate of appetizers while Maria went to the door again, scanning the street. She saw no one, but she was mistaken. Someone was coming after all. A young woman was walking so slowly and quietly, hugging the walls of the shops and houses that it was a while before Maria noticed her. She looked very tired, and she was carrying something. As she drew near, Maria could see that it was a baby wrapped in a thin shawl. There was such a sadness in her face and in the pinched little face of the baby that Maria's heart went out to them. Won't you come in, she called, stepping outside to meet them. You both need a warm seat by the fire and a rest. The young mother left Maria, shepherded her indoors into the comfort of an armchair. The mother gave a big sigh of relief. I'll warm some milk for the baby, Manuel said. I've had children of my own. I can feed her for you. He took the milk from the stove and carefully fed the baby, warming her tiny feet by the stove at the same time. She needs shoes, Manuel said. But the girl replied, I can't afford shoes. I have no money and I have no work. A sudden thought flashed through Maria's mind. She remembered the little shoes Manuel had dusted off the night before. But shouldn't they be keeping those for Jesus? She looked again at the baby's cold little feet and made up her mind. She got a stool, went over to the high bookshelf, and took down 
the box that Manuel had showed her last night. Manuel knew what she was doing, and he agreed it was the best thing to do. May we try these on her, Maria asked, handing the shoes to the mother. And the beautiful little shoes were a perfect fit. The young mother smiled happily, and the baby gurgled with pleasure. You've been so kind to us, the girl said, when she got up with her baby to go. May all your Christmas wishes come true. Both Maria and Manuel were beginning to wonder if their very special Christmas would come true. Perhaps he, they had missed their visitor. They took turns looking anxiously up and down the street. There were plenty of people about, but they were all faces they recognized. There were neighbors going to call on their families. They nodded and smiled and wished one another Merry Christmas. There were also men and women without homes, so Maria and Manuel traded turns, hurrying indoors to fetch hot soup and bread, hurrying out again in case they missed the important stranger. All too soon, the winter dusk fell, and the dimness reached a point when neither Maria or Manuel could make out the passers-by. Most were home, indoors by now anyway. So finally, they closed the door, closed the curtains, and sat down again by the fire. Without saying a word, they both knew what the other person was thinking. So it had been only a dream after all. Jesus had not come. Then all at once, they both felt no. They both knew they were no longer the only two in the room. This was not a dream, for they were wide awake. And at first they saw before their eyes the long stream of people who had come to them that day. They saw again the runner, the young mother and her baby, the homeless men and women they had fed. As they all passed, each whispered, Didn't you see me, Maria and Manuel? Who are you, Maria, called out bewildered? Who are you, Manuel, called out confused? And then another voice answered them. It was the voice from their dream, the voice of Jesus. I was hungry and you fed me, he said. I was naked and you clothed me. I was cold and you warmed me. I came to you today and every one of those you helped and welcomed. Then all was quiet and still. Only the sound of the crackling fire. A great peace and happiness seemed to fill the room, overflowing the hearts of Maria and Manuel. It's not clear who went first, but soon both of them were laughing then dancing, and then singing this refrain with joy. So Jesus did come to us after all. So Jesus did come to us after all. So Jesus did come on Christmas Day after all. Our closing hymn is a newer one, but one of my favorites. He came down. Please join us at home.
A few announcements at the close of this service. First, uh, to remind you that we will have a coffee fellowship time immediately following the service this morning. Simply stay on the Zoom call, and uh, after the service ends, we will see one another, and Deirdre will break us up into smaller rooms, and we can chat for about 10 minutes or so. What a wonderful way for us to connect, and I'm glad that uh, we're continuing to do this and that many of you are participating and connecting in this way. If you're joining us by YouTube this morning uh, and you would like to join our Coffee Fellowship time, you'll need to come in and log in to Zoom, and that login information is on our church website. This week, uh, the Golden Bogans will be on vacation, uh, and we are looking forward to that time of rest and uh, time to have a different pattern, and we look forward to rejoining you again on January 4th. Um, and uh, just a, an opportunity for me to say here what a wonderful, glorious, strange, crazy year it has been at Shalott Congregational Church. And um, I love you all, and I couldn't imagine being in a community other than this one uh, for such a year as 2020. So thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your support and encouragement of me and my family and of one another. And thank you for your faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I look forward to 2021 and all of the mystery and wonder and craziness that I'm sure that awaits us all. Uh, in the new year. Next Sunday, January 3rd, Susan will be preaching and leading the service. And to remind you that uh, the first Sunday of the month, we celebrate communion together. And so we invite you to bring your own elements to that service, uh, bread, juice, wine, or whatever you happen to have. And we will uh, celebrate Holy Communion at an extended table inviting God's peace and presence into our lives and into our homes. So it is great news, such wonderful great news, that in every person we meet today, we also have an opportunity. If we have eyes to see and ears to hear, we have an opportunity to meet the Christ child. So go with that promise, go with that expectation, and treat everyone you meet as if there's room in the end, if there's room in the heart for them. Go in peace. Amen. Please sing along with the first two verses of O Come All Ye Faithful. Thank you. 